Uh, hi, in this video, we are going to see some of the mules of the interview question. Mainly, we are going to see uh, some of the scenario based question. The first one, as soon as the records inserted to database, our API should pick up the newly inserted record from database automatically. How can we achieve this? So for example, uh, there is a database, uh, there is a source or there is a process which is inserting some of the records into this database. So from the mule API, I wanted to listen or I wanted to pick the data whenever it is inserted. Instead of having a scheduler to monitor and uh, I wanted to pick up very frequently. So what we can do is there is an option in MuleSoft instead of using scheduler module. So you can use this on table row. So when you use on table row, it will check the database table. If there are anything inserted very recently, it will pick up those records. So how do we do it? So we can use on table row to listen particular database table to get the change record in our API. And also how do we do it? If you see the look at the screen here in the right side. So when we add a on table row, right? So you'll be able to see this one, which is in a general section where we will specify the database table information and it is having watermark column. So we need to say which column we wanted to watermark it. So that uh, in the every run, right, every polling interval, if you see here, there's a polling interval as well. So in this particular interval, it will go and check in and based on the watermark level, it will pick only the latest record. For example, first time I'm picking up the record, it will take the record from the table and it will insert it uh, to the downstream system or send it to the downstream system. And after that, till what level we have picked the record and it will watermark that information. And next time when our uh, scheduler or whenever our polling runs, right, it will use that watermarking and then from that level it will take the remaining record and also if you see this one right on table row so whenever there is a changes in the table it will pick up our records from the database so that is what the question is as soon as the record is inserted to database whenever there is a record is inserted i wanted to immediately know so then what we need to use we need to use on table row in order to know what are the records inserted or updated and based on that we can process it to downstream system I'll move on to the next question. If you need to insert 100 records into table database using batch processing, until 10 records failed it, it needs to insert it after that, it should stop the execution. For example, you have 100 records which you need to insert it okay, into the database. And uh, in between, uh, there are some records failing and I wanted to stop it after until if it is 10 records failed, still it's okay for me. And then if it is continuously it is failing more than that I want to stop it how do we do it so in this case it's 100 and I wanted to make it 10 records when there is a maximum fail then I wanted to stop the flow so you, when you use a batch processing right uh, so the mainly the question is related to batch processing only so in a, when you add a batch job and in the batch job there is a property called maximum fail record so if it is zero it's uh, even though you know it's failed it's still it will continue but again if I say maximum fail record and if I say uh, 10 record, right? So then uh, up to, uh, if it is a nine fail, then it will still, it will continue. When it is reaching the 10th record is getting failed, then it will stop there and uh, it will complete the particular flow. We'll move on to the next question. Even though database insert fail, the next component should execute. How can we achieve this? For example, you have a, in your flow, you have a database uh, module and where you are trying to insert records and uh, in in your database module, right, or in the insert, it is you have it in the middle of your flow. Even though it's failed, you wanted to continue the next processor. Normally, what will happen when there is a failure, it will go to your error handling and it will stop the flow, right? But the question is, even though it's failed, I wanted to proceed to the further step. So how do we do it? So we can use try scope to handle the exception. And in the try scope, right, uh, we will have the our insert component and uh, in the error handling, right, in the try scope, we will have a on error continue. So on error continue is whenever error is failed, you wanted to continue, right. So if you handle that in a try scope, then it will talk, it will allow you to go to the uh, next processor to continue the remaining steps. I'll move on to the next question. So this is mainly for the FTP or SFTP connector. 
So after the file is read, so for example, I'm using SFTP module here, I'm using a read uh, in order to read the content from the SFTP location or FTP location. So once I re use the read, right, will the file will be deleted or moved to the folder or it stays there itself. For example, I'm using a read operation in order to read particular file. And when we use read itself, it downloads the file and it removes the files from there or it stays there itself. The answer is it stays there itself because you have to use some operation like delete. For example, I want to delete it from my source FTP location or SFTP location. Then you have to use the delete operation in order to be deleted. Or if you wanted to move to some other folder, for example, I have picked up the file. I wanted to move it to some archive folder. Then what I can do is I can use move operation in order to move the file from the pickup folder to archive folder. I'll move on to the next question. How to export the mule project? For example, you have created a project in any point studio and you wanted to export that file as a jar. So in what cases you want that to be exported as a jar? So you, for example, you wanted to deploy into mule runtime or in a cloud app. So you wanted to export and you wanted to log into your any point platform. And from there you wanted to, in a runtime manager, you wanted to deploy, then you need a jar file, right? Or if you have a jar file and you wanted to give it your, uh, other colleague and uh, he want to use it for some changes or anything or any troubleshooting then you can export that as a jar so how do we do it you select a project so here i have selected the project and right click and you just click export and once you click export you, this dialog box will appear where you have to choose under mule you have to choose hinipine studio project to mule deployable archive so this one you need to choose it because the deployable archive is nothing but it's your jar file so we are going to extract this project as a build so it is going to export that as a jar file and that jar file i wanted to export it so when you wanted to export it you need a location where you wanted to store or you wanted to save that jar file right so once you click this one and you click next it will ask you to select the location where you wanted to save the jar file so once you give and click finish then it will get saved. It will get exported successfully. So how to export it? You have to go to your project, right click and you have to click export and you have to click any point studio project to mule deployable archive, which is nothing but your jar file and select the jar file path and click finish. I'll move on to the next question. How to import other project jar file? For example, you have a jar file, but you wanted to import that into your any point studio. So how do we do it? You go to file menu and there is an option called import. So once you give that, this dialog box will appear. There is something called package mule application and jar option. Because the question is how do you import as a jar file in your AnyPoint studio. So you'll select that option and you browse the jar file and click finish. So then the using the jar, it will create a project in your AnyPoint studio and it will have all the components stored there. I'll move on to the next question. Can we deploy domain project into cloud up? So cloud up is nothing but your any point platform, right? Where you can run your mule runtime from runtime manager. You can create your application. You can deploy your application. So the, the question is, can we deploy domain project into cloud up? No, because the domain project is mainly for on premise environment only. So it's not for cloud up environment. I'll move on to the next question. In choice router, if first route and second routes conditions are true, which route it will execute? So you have a choice router and you have many routes. Okay. So, but in this example, you have two routes. Okay. So in the choice router, we can specify our when condition. For example, my first route and also the second route, the conditions are matching. For example, assume uh, if variable a equal to 10. So the same condition is available in the first route and second route. So which one it will go? So it will always go to the first matching route. So whatever the condition, right? If you have a, uh, you have a choice router with five routes and then you have first route is matching, third is matching and fifth is matching, which one it will go? It will always go to the first matching route. I'll move on to the next question. In database select, no, no records are satisfying the condition. Then what will be the output from the database? For example, I have a database where uh, I, am, I am having a select one. So I'm just trying to select some records from my database table where I have given some where condition or in the table itself, there is no record. So in this question, right? If there is no sat 
select no records are satisfying the condition then what will be the output for example i'm trying to get some data from my flights table where i'm just trying to give flights name equal to abc okay then there is no record in the table then what will be the output your payload will be empty so that is what it will come so what will be the output if there is no record satisfying in the table condition then your payload will be empty the answer is the payload is empty i'll move on to the next question so this is the last one so this is mainly for the for each so for example if your input for for each is 1 2 3 4 5 okay so if you see you look at this one it's a collection it has five elements and inside for each placed a transfer message and performed some function what is the output of for each so for example this is the listener which receives the request and you are setting the variable where we are setting the variable sum equal to zero and then we are setting the payload the payload is nothing but this array and for each basically it loops the record for example you have a five elements it's a collection and it's trying to loop each record and then in the transfer message what we are doing is we are performing some some operation or some function where it will try to add each number okay so for example when for each executes it will go to the first record where we are trying to sum it uh, the earlier in the set variable we are trying to initialize the sum value equal to zero okay so the, when you loop inside this zero plus one it will become one the next time when it picks up the second one the previous value equal to one and then the new value equal to two so one plus two it will become three similarly it will loop over all the records so finally what we will get it we will get the answer is 15 because it will sum all these value and the question is what is the output after the, of for each for example when it, when it comes to this logger right after the for each what will be the output so you will have the output as 15 yeah that's it for today thank you uh, hi thank you for watching this video so far if you like the video please share it with your friends and also subscribe to this tech lightning channel thank you bye bye